Hello and welcome back to X-Plane 11. Thank you very much for joining me in this video. And today we're going to be taking off our 737 from Echo Golf Papa Hotel. And we're going to be doing a circuit around this particular airport. That is Edinburgh Airport. Uh, the time is half past five. And uh, there is a couple of things to note, or there are a couple of things to note. Uh, the first thing to note is that the actual weather is ever so slightly different. Uh, due to uh, a bug, or well, actually not due to a bug, but due to something that I didn't save uh, and the fact that I couldn't reload this aircraft in to do the actual video so I've had to set this aircraft up again so there may be a few things that look a little bit different but I, th but I think for the most part inside the aircraft everything should be absolutely fine um, but yes, the weather will be a little bit different we're still on the same runway, winds are two uh, seven knots coming in from 260 so that means that our ailerons do need to be rolled into the wind which means they need to be rolled in to the uh, right but anyway aside from that there are a couple of things that I'm going to talk about in a moment before we take off but make sure you stay tuned for the next I'd say maybe 20 that's about 20 25 minutes uh, to see what happens with this because uh, there are a couple of things that don't seem to be working in the way I want them to, possibly because I've set this up for a circuit. So anyway, I'll talk about that after the intro. So, with regards to things not actually working properly, uh, the few things that I need to first check to make sure are okay is we need to swap these over to continuous. So that's the first thing we need to do. Our landing lights are on, our strobe lights are on, our traffic mode we need to switch on, but we're not going to. I'm actually going to switch it off. Um, that's actually on, but uh, is that on? That's on or off? Hold on. I guess with terrain it's always on. I can't see the traffic mode. TCAS. Anyway, we need to switch this into the full mode right there. Um, which is that one. Actually, that's there it is. It now says it's on that one, TFC. Fantastic, that's what I was looking for. Um, so that's the transponder mode into TAR8, and uh, the clock can start. But before the clock starts, there's something I need to point out, and that is... Look at that. And that's one there. For some reason, the VORs do not seem to be working, or do not seem to have been picked up on this MFD right here. So this map doesn't seem to be showing the VOR frequencies and the distance to them, despite them being in here. So this is something that's really uh, confusing. So I'm just going to see if there's anything that's uh, wrong over here. I think I've maybe selected something wrong. So we're just going to spend a, a minute on the ground uh, just to see what's going to happen. I think it might be just to do with the fact that I'm on, I'm on the ground. I'm hoping that it's just to do with the fact that I'm on the ground. So once we get in the air, it should be okay. But you never know. This is something that I'm not used to, of course, the, the realism uh, on that. So let's have a look. Let's just double check our chart. So we've got runway 24. The frequency is 108.9, which is what we've set in there. Uh, that's fine. And that's fine. We're going to uh, be at 3,000 feet when we come in. And we're going to be doing a left-hand circuit. All right, so we're going to climb out to 4,000 feet. I'm actually going to set the vertical speed up for... Let's go for uh, 1,500 foot per minute. Uh, everything else should be kind of interesting. This is going to be very, very interesting because this is not something I've done in a long time time and I've definitely not done a circuit so I don't know how the aircraft is going to be uh, with regards to the circuit so there is that okay so anyway I think we're ready to go let's see exactly what happens uh, set myself up properly here make sure that's okay which it is check the other one yep that's fine as well everything else seems ready to go Move myself back a bit, like that. Just a bit more comfortable. Just a bit further back. There we go. That's better. 
Okay, lovely. Start the clock. And here we go. Prepare to release the brakes. Brakes released. Keep that nose down. 80 knots. Now the takeoff speed is very low. D1. D1. Rotate. Rotate. Whoa. Alright. Gear up. Stop bringing those flaps in. That was a very interesting takeoff. The aircraft just, the nose just lifted. 400. All right, I know that the airspeed is not correct. Let's crank that right the way up to 220. Actually, 215 will do. Get speed on that. There we go. 1,000. 1,000 feet. I'm now going to bring in the flaps all the way. We're going to go into autopilot. We're going to go vertical speed. Let the aircraft do whatever it needs to do. Go and go vertical speed, get the vertical speed correct. Good, and we're going to go into heading hold. And it should be already on that on that heading. So that was kind of a, a sharp takeoff. Uh, the aircraft did get away from me a little bit. Right, so let's clean this aircraft up. Like that, like that. Let's get the retracts out. That looks fine by me. We'll take the turnoffs. That looks okay. Okay, so now we're going to be at the speed we need to be. Now this is where we're going to see how this aircraft performs because it shouldn't really be doing this or it's doing right now. But un unfortunately it seems that it wants to do this. So in fact I'm going to try and do this myself. Just get it stabilized myself. There we go and then see how it wants to perform from that. No, it still wants to... Interesting. It's doing a little bit better. So we're going to come out to the 10 mile mark and then we're going to uh, turn over to a heading of... Uh, what heading do we want? 153 is the next heading we want. Let's have a look at the aircraft from the outside. There it is. You can see the crosswinds, the way the aircraft is flying as opposed to the way the nose is actually pointing. Uh, so you can see that there is where it should be. The nose should be pointing there, but obviously it's pointing in that direction. And you can see that crosswind, it's a 30 knot crosswind coming in from 286. So that's why the nose has to be pointed into it. Alright, altitude acquired. So it should level off at 4000. So that was an interesting takeoff, not the kind of takeoff I wanted. Did manage to keep control over it, but uh, it, it did immediately want to pitch up. So that was rather interesting. Uh, I'm going to leave the terrain radar on. And you can now see that we are at 4,000 at 4, feet. That's pretty good. So at this point, normally we'd just be relaxing, I guess. In fact, we'd be talking to air traffic control and going uh, up further. But uh, at this point in time, we don't really have much to do apart from uh, enjoy the view. I suppose we could pick up uh, a checklist if we wanted to. Could look at a, a descent checklist. Landing altitude is verified, that's fine. We've done that. VREF, we're about to enter. I'll tell you what, we'll put in our minimums right now. Uh, what should we do? Let's have a look at the chart. Now, you guys can't see this chart, but I'm going to have a look at the chart. So the approach of elevation is one, airport elevation, sorry, is 136 feet. So as a matter of fact, we're going to put the landing altitude up to 150 feet right there. Uh, at this point also, we're going to get the aircraft turning onto a heading of 153. There we go, so the aircraft is now turning. 
that's for 153 uh, and whilst it's doing that let's have a look at our minimums uh, does it have any minimums yes radio altimeter needs to be at uh, cat 3 now we're looking for cat 2 ILS we're looking for 106 so let's see if we get that correct there we go I knew I'd got that wrong 106 there we go okay so that's that's set up correctly for us I'm not going to explain what this does this is just me practicing but it is going you will hear the call out going radio altimeters all right so now we're just making our way around as a circuit around the airport city of Edinburgh is just out there still not happy about that climb that climb out was not the kind of climb out I wanted definitely not I feel like something wasn't set up all too correct or something from didn't save from something else from the previous video because this was loaded in from the other video but I feel like a few things were broken and I think maybe maybe the trim was incorrect Perhaps the trim was somewhat incorrect, and that's what caused the aircraft to nose up quite uh, severely. Right, so tell you what, let's go for an approach ref on that one. Uh, should we have a look at what arrivals we can actually do? ILS 24. These ones still haven't come alive. I'm worried about that. There isn't any arrivals that we can actually pop in. I mean, we've got, we've got a little bit more information for us, so that's going to help us. But why have these VORs not come alive? Because that means, and if I understand this correctly, I am not going to be able to use the localizer or approach mode. I am fairly sure I'm not going to be able to use those. So... Hmm. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that. Uh, I mean, we have, we have the, or we did have, let's turn into a heading of 063. We did have the sort of ILS glide slope and localizer ready for us but it doesn't seem to it doesn't seem to have it on here I wonder if there's a I wonder if there's an issue I do wonder if there's an issue which means we're going to have to make do without Don't put that into test. There we go. Um, let's have a look. Is there anything that that maybe we've missed here? Not that I can see. So on the MCP, select VOR mode. Let's have a look. That's not working. I have a feeling we've got a bug. I think we've got a bug. I might have to reinstall this aircraft because that definitely should be working. On the other hand though, we do have a part of a flight plan to get us in. So there is that. That's going to help us a little bit. Yes, we've got a discontinuity. I don't have to worry about that discontinuity. Right.
Okay, well, never mind. So we're not going to be able to take a look at that aircraft and figure out what's going on. I'm just wondering if there's anything else I can have a look at that might tell me if something's not working correctly. Anything over here? Nothing. That shouldn't really cause anything to happen. No. Nothing there. None of those buttons work yet. Interesting. Alright. Uh, let's have a look at the legs page. What have we got? Thank you. Right, let's ignore the pink line for now. Uh, let's have a look. This is beautiful. This actually looks really nice like this. Just see the glow of the sun. Where are the shadows gone, though? I feel like there are, there are shadows missing. Um, let's bring you out to that range. There we go. All right, so there's, a, there's that nine-mile mark. That's the turning. Uh, just inside that 10 mile range so we're actually going to line up on that uh, and as you can see if we go into that one for the approach we're going to go for a flaps 30 approach so that's going to now select flaps 30 for us I hope yep 30 our target speed is 121 so you see that VRF 121 that's fine uh, here's some speeds and some informations for uh, information for us. So the first thing is at uh, Charlie India 24 we need to be at 3,000 feet. So we need to make sure we're at 3,000 feet there. That is 16 nautical miles away from us. Uh, no, it's not. It's six. Yes, it is. From wherever we need to be. Then we've got a 6.1 nautical mile run, and we need to be down to. Uh, 1060 feet and then all the way down and that's that's absolutely fine we're not going to be using this today this is just me trying to work out what's wrong with the VORs that's why I've activated this otherwise we do not need to be using this however at this point in time I am going to turn to a heading of 333 there we go I'll also bring this down to that uh, much gentler bank. Alright. And as it swings us around, we're going to go down to 3,000 feet. As you can see, it's not going to drop us immediately. But we are, as soon as we level out, we're going to go into vertical speed mode. In fact, we're going to vertical speed right now. 500 foot per minute, rate of descent. Thousand to go. Thousand to go, thank you, co-pilot. Alright, so now we are preparing for a landing. So this would be very similar to a landing procedure that we would take. So, on go the retracks, on go the runway turnoff lights, I guess. That would be in flight, so that would go back to continuous. Everything's good here. We would be preparing for our landing. So we would have this one set up as, as it is. Uh, we'll bring that in closer now. And we would have this one perhaps go into uh, approach mode or something. I guess we can do... Actually, there is a certain mode I want. There it is. That's the one I wanted. Okay, so that would show us... Uh, a whole bunch of information so there's our descent profile that's the terrain and that's where we should be headed as you can see that pink line is where we should be headed all the way through so we're going to see what we can do here we're at three and a half thousand feet there's the airport this is going to be very interesting as i said this is the first time landing this aircraft in this fashion is it the first time might be the second time the first time was a, a practice run but this, this is definitely uh, one of the only times I'm trying to do it properly. 
which is why it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, we're going to set up our brakes and now let's go through the landing checklist. So we're going to have, uh, let's see, VRF has been entered, those have been done. That's been done, auto brake has been done, descent procedure complete. Landing for the ILS, uh, we're not going to be able to use the approach mode or the localizer. We're going to be waiting for the landing, uh, landing gear to come down. Uh, we will bring the landing gear down ourselves once we turn on final. So currently we are on what's known as the base leg. So we're going to bring the landing gear down uh, as we turn on final. At this point in time though, I am going to slow the aircraft down to 200 knots and bring out the first stage of flaps. And you can see that the ticker tape has now come down right the way that, uh, for us. We're actually going to go for a second stage of flaps. Altitude hold. Now it's a shame that we don't have the heads up display because I would have swapped into the heads up display right now. That would have been a lot easier for me. It's also a shame we can't actually hide this. I'd like to do that too. Uh, let's go for flaps five. Reduce speed 190. Now I would like to try the VOR localizer mode, but I'm not sure if it's going to pick it up correctly. Which is why I'm not going to try it. This can now go into a 10 mile radius. There we go. That's good for me. There we go. We've got the localizer and we've got the glide slope. Both of them are alive. Still can't pick up that VOR for, for some reason on this. Which is uh, again a little bit concerning. Now as you can see that is further in than the 10 mile mark. It's actually around the 9 mile mark. So. There's that, we're 3.8 nautical miles away from it, as you can see, that's not a problem. We could just go into uh, VNAV and LNAV and get the aircraft to stop flying itself in. Um, so I, I could do that. Tell you what, should we go into LNAV and just let the aircraft, see if the aircraft flies itself in? There it goes. That's working. That's actually working quite well. All right, so we'll do LNAV. And uh, you know what? Since we have got this, we'll go VNAV. We're also going to on the speed brake at this point in time. How do I make sure it's armed? There it is. This one's kind of tricky. I'm going to see if I can make something a little bit better uh, of that. Okay, at this point in time, we're going to go um, slow down to 180. And we're going to go VNAV. VNAV's not going to work for us, is it? No. That's fine. We are now turning in. Let's get ourselves going down to 1,000 feet. Vertical speed. Start reducing at 500 foot per minute. Another stage of flaps. This uh, this approach swings us out a little bit, doesn't it? Go. Slow us down to 170. Landing gear on final. Uh, we'll wait until we are at two and a half thousand feet, and then we'll bring that landing gear out. This hasn't lined us up properly. I will say that. Look, look at that. Look where we are. This really hasn't lined us up properly. Right, let's just adjust our rate of descent to help us. That's better. 2500. 2, Landing gear. Would you speed 160? Next stage of flaps, flaps 15. 
producing speed 150. This is a light aircraft, that's why we're having to slow down so much, which means it's going to be a very interesting landing too. It is trying to straighten ourselves up. Uh, the aircraft's trying to do it itself. Once we're down to a thousand, I think I'm going to... I feel like taking control myself. A thousand to go. A thousand to go. Confirmed. One four zero. This is a very slow approach. Landing gears are down. We've got three greens. Flaps 15 is done. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's done. That's done. Right. One thousand five hundred feet. There's the runway. If we were now to put this into VOR mode, you follow it there, which is fine. But uh, we don't really need that because we've got it there. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to take command of this aircraft myself. Uh, at least the auto heading hold is going. That's going to go off. That's going to go off. Autopilot disengaged. I have control. Because it doesn't seem to have lined me up properly. Right. Another stage of flaps. Flaps 25. I'm not sure why this hasn't lined me up. 1,000. 1,000 feet stabilized, Mr. Perch altitude set. Mr. Perch altitude is 3,000 feet. I'll set that up now. There's 3,000. Auto throttle can now go off. I now have full control of this aircraft. Flaps 30. Okay. Now comes the difficult part. Landing an aircraft I haven't landed in a long time. Okay. So just got to keep an eye on this. Keep watching it. Watch that nose. We do have a crosswind of 12 knots. So I'm just going to have a slight compensation for that with the rudder. I'm at flaps 30, so I do have a full flap setting as I come in. Well, I could go flaps 40, but I'm not going to. 500. 500. Four hundred. Slightly fast, but it's okay. Keeping us on the glide. Keeping two whites and two reds. As close as I can, and as much as I can. We're almost at, we're almost at uh, idle here. Or almost, at, sorry, at 40%, which is pretty low for an aircraft like this, but what can you do? Now we're really bringing the aircraft down. Minimums. One hundred. One hundred. Minimums. Landing. Threshold. Idle the idle the power. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And we are down. Ailerons into the wind. Nose gear down. Braking. 80 knots. 80 knots. Manual braking. Auto brake disarmed. Release the brakes. And we are down. Keep those ailerons into the wind though. And we will take the next taxiway off when we can see it. Where is the next taxiway? Should be Bravo, right? I think. Here it is. Which taxiway is this? We'll slow the aircraft down a little bit more. 30, 30 knots. This is Bravo. We'll slow down to a good 20 before we turn. 
There we go. And turn the aircraft off. Flaps can now go in. You can hear me clicking that all the way up. Flaps in. And at this point, we will stop just here. We'll clean up the aircraft before we taxi back to the gate. Alright, parking brake on. Now normally this, would, this wouldn't this would be a problem, the co-pilot would be doing this, but uh, clearly I've got to do this myself. Runway lights can go off, that can go on, those can go off, that can then go to steady, that's absolutely fine. And I think we are uh, good after landing, auto brake is off. There we go. Street brake lever is down, which it's not. That's because it was armed. That's gone all the way. Probe heat can now go off. So that's uh, these ones up here. Off. Exterior lighting we've done. Engine start switches can go back to automatic. Like that. Weather radar can go off. Flaps can go off. I guess we can switch the terrain off as well. Flaps are already up. Transponder can go back to uh, where it needs to be, which is that position there. What's your warning? Nothing. Now that you do, you are warning about something. Uh, the clock, I guess, can stop. There we go. And now we're just going to go for a shutdown. We're not going to do that though, because this is where I am going to end this video. We're just going to go up to the gate whilst I'm, uh, whilst I'm talking to you guys. So, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos on X Plane 11. Uh, for my first time back, in general, that I'll say. I'll give myself a 7 out of 10 for that. Uh, I managed to actually get the aircraft on the ground without too much trouble. Uh, the takeoff was a little bit sketchy and the descent wasn't too bad at all. Uh, in the ne or the next time I fly the Zebo mod, I am going to be doing a proper flight. So if you've got two airports, please don't make them too far apart, but if you've got two airports that you'd like me to fly from and to, let me know and I will consider it. Um, I might take off from Edinburgh or something and fly over to somewhere else, but do let me know. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do that, but uh, I shall be looking into it at some point. Uh, I guess we can. Oh, yeah, we need to bring the ailerons into the wind on this side too. There we go. Uh, let's get rid of that. There we go. Uh, I don't want you. There we go. Uh, that's more like it. Perfect. Alright, so we're just pottering along at 30 knots, which is a lot faster than you should be taxiing, but uh, I'm making haste to end this video. Um, don't forget to support me on Patreon if you can do so. That's www.patreon.com slash ecgadget. Your support would be massively, massively appreciated. It would really, really help me out. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ecgadget. Your support would, there would be really appreciated. And also on um, on social media at ecgadgetlp for both Twitter and Instagram. I think we're pretty close to having this aircraft ready to shut down anyway. But I'm not going to do the shutdown. Look at that lag. So your help on Patreon will help me purchase a new graphics card. Uh, that's all from me. And I think I'll see you next time in X-Plane 11. Let's finish this video with actually me pulling in back into the gate. That is a lot of lag. Look at that, even X-Plane's warning me that, hang on a minute, something's not right. Minimum frame rate hasn't been achieved in over a minute. What do you know? Okay. Let's get ourselves parked up. I don't know how close I am to the middle, actually, when I'm looking at this, but we shall see. Stop the aircraft right there. Fantastic. Should we have a look? Let's have a quick look outside. Almost bang on the center line. That was very, very close. We could have brought the aircraft a little bit further forward, but almost bang on the center line. Thank you very much for watching. And aside from a really lovely picture there, I'll see you guys next time in X-Plane 11.